Whoa, 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 whoa. Why y'all so happy? And you don't know. Charvette Mitchell is on the radio. It's time to get motivated, excited, and, and, and influenced. Why? It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, live from Richmond, Virginia. And now, here to motivate, excite, and influence you, Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Mitchell. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, but heard all across the World Wide Web. Listen, I am tickle pink, as my auntie from Millersville, Georgia, would say, uh, to host this special edition of the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. So I'm telling you what, you are going to enjoy every single guest we have tonight. We have a jam-packed show, and my featured guest is hanging out in the virtual green room, and I'm about to bring him up to the mic. Uh, But listen, I know you're saying, who's on the show tonight? Who's on the show? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. We are kicking off the top of the hour out here with Bishop Jason Nelson. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Certainly one of the most recognized voices in gospel music, Uh, Stella Award winner, new project out, Jesus Revealed. We're going to hear all about it. Uh, And so he's hanging out with us. Then we'll roll into our next segment. We have Andrea Dumas joining us all the way from Washington, D.C. Uh, Andrea has sung background for Yolanda Adams. She currently sings with Richard Smallwood in Vision, and she has her own project out right now called Celebrate. So you're going to hear from her. And then we're going to roll into our third segment, uh, chatting it up with Chief Apostle Olive C. Brown, right here from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia. A sought-after preacher, prophetic voice, She's the presiding prelate of International Christian Ministries and has a brand new book out that's available on Amazon.com, Unlocking the Giant Within. And then we'll wrap up the show chatting it up with Bishop Sean Lewis, all the way from Petersburg, Virginia, Raymer Word Ministries. You're going to hear all from him. And guess what? All of our guests tonight, all of our guests tonight are a part of the 11th pastoral anniversary celebration for Bishop Joel Vincent Brown, which is taking place in the city April 24th through the 26th. You're going to hear more about that. I'll give you all the details. But listen, I want to jump right on in. Again, first segment, hanging out with me right now, Bishop Jason Nelson. I'm bringing him up to the mic. Welcome to the show, Bishop. Nelson. Thank you for having me, Charvette. I appreciate it. Oh, awesome, awesome. Well, we are glad to have you. I know your schedule is packed jam, uh, but thank you for your time. No problem at all. It's my pleasure. I appreciate you for having me on. All right. So uh, I know you have recently, not too long ago, gotten back from the Stella Awards. We saw you uh, a couple events and streaming and all that good stuff. Uh, in your opinion, what was the difference between Stella Awards Nashville and Stella Awards Vegas? Uh, <laughs> it was a lot more people. <laughs> uh-huh. A lot, a lot more people were there than um and to me, that had generally attended previously. Um, the venue was obviously a lot bigger. And um, the, I, I think the, the biggest difference is just the feel of the city. Um, Vegas mm-hmm. is not what I would call a music city. Mm-hmm. Um, it's known for other things, and I won't necessarily, you know, um, enumerate what they are, but it's known for a whole <laughs> right. bunch of other things. Um, versus Nashville, which is known as a music city. So the feel is, was a little bit different. Um, but otherwise, you know, it, it was, um, I thought it was a great show, ultimately. Um, and, you know, they showcased a lot of great talent. So, you know, I guess I can't really complain about it one way or the other. <laughs> All right. Awesome, awesome. I wanted your personal opinion on that, on that. So I was listening to uh, an interview the other day with Casey J, and she was chatting up, uh, talking about her new project out, and the interviewer asked, well, do you have any collaborations on your new project? And certainly Casey J uh, with uh, Fill Me Up and, oh, my goodness, just Weep in the nation um, with that song. And so the interviewer uh, said, who, who else is on the project with you? And she only had two collaborations, and one is her grandmother and one is you. So, yeah, and she yeah. spoke so well of you. So tell us about that collaboration. Well, I mean, it was to me, it was. I, I always have a good time um, whenever I'm collaborating with somebody who I really enjoy being around. Uh, Casey yeah. is just a good person in general. Um, she really loves God. Her heart for worship is always, you know, at the forefront. So being able, being a worshiper myself, being able to 
um, share the stage, stage with her was all, is always good, especially on her debut recording. Um, you know, so I was, you know, glad she asked me to be a part and I was happy to consent. And um, I think she has a really, really great project on her hands. All right, so we are uh, waiting with bated breath on that, uh, and certainly we will get to hear uh, your collaboration with that as well. So awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's chat. I certainly want to chat about you and your brother. I know anyone that follows you on social media, uh, we can just genuinely see uh, the brotherly love that you guys have. How do you all uh, support each other in ministry? Well, I mean, honestly, we're probably each other's number one fan. I mean, if we can, if I can use that terminology, then we're brothers. But um, we support support each other in everything we do, um, whether it be in recording, you know, uh, support online. Go get this. Go download this song. Go listen to this. Go do that. Um, we're brothers, so it you know, and, and being twins, it really makes it easy for us to make that connection one to another. Um, and um and and, it's, and then of course it's easy also because um I think he makes exceptional music. He has an ear yeah. for um the sound of the church. Uh, he just has a way of singing those songs that the church loves to sing. And um so be, because of of how gifted he is, it makes it easy to support him. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, well put, well said, and we certainly see that, uh, certainly at least in, through social media and other interactions. Uh, listeners, if you just tuned in, hey there, you're checking out the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, and we're chatting up here with Bishop Jason Nelson. Uh, really excited to have him here. Uh, you can experience his preaching ministry, preaching ministry, uh, yes, in the capital city of Richmond, uh, Sunday, April 26th, uh, with Bishop Joel Vincent Brown, the 11th pastoral anniversary celebration. Uh, that service is at 5 p.m. on that Sunday, April 26, 5 p.m. The location of the service is Ephesus, 7th day at Venice, right down on Midlothian Turnpike. Y'all know where it is. Uh, come out, come out and experience it. All right, so uh, Bishop Nelson, let's talk about Jesus Revealed. I want to hear how you pull this together, your producers, your songwriters, all that good stuff. Okay, I mean, well, I guess the easy way to start is to start at the connection between my producer and I. Um, um, he's actually one of my best friends and has been for some years. Um, we've, we've been making music together um, since we were teenagers, and if you want to call it, quote, unquote, professionally, probably since 98, 99. Okay. And um, we, we connected back then and um, kind of we stayed connected as friends, but we didn't do anything musically for some years until Shifting the Atmosphere. Um, and, you know, Shifting the Atmosphere was, was a huge success for us, and um, I'm extremely grateful for it. And then, you know, we started writing again, and um, the record really started with the lead single, I Am. Um, mm. we, I preached this series I'm, I'm giving you the whole answer kind of in one fell swoop, but um, <laughs> I, preached <laughs> I preached a series at the, at the church um, dealing with the um, the names of God. It was called The Revealed God, and it was based mm-hmm. on the concept that Jehovah means literally in its, in its transliteration, the Lord God who unceasingly reveals himself, and um, so we we dealt we were just dealing with the fact that when you when you call on the name of God, you're calling on one of the revelations of who He is, and then of course Jesus is a is is God concealed in the Old Testament, and He is God revealed in the New Testament. Um, mm. So we did this in the series. I, I taught on the name I Am, and um, that that word really impacted our church in a major way. And the next week I was on a plane traveling, and the Lord started to drop those lyrics in my heart for I Am. So I went over to Dana's house, who was my producer, and um, said, man, I got this song. Let's work on it. And, and even on the demo, you can really feel and, and sense the presence of God. It was really incredible. And um, wow. when we listened back to the song, I said, Dana, this is what we're supposed to talk about. This is the language that God wants us to release in this time. He wants us to, to talk about who he is and, and deal with his names. So the whole record of Jesus Revealed is really about revealing or un- unveiling the names of God um, throughout canon, from, from Genesis all the way up to um, the New Testament, where, you, where the name of Jesus is revealed as the name above all names. 
now this is what you call a bishop who records music like that that this is how you just explain that is a clear distinction no diss no knock on anyone any other type of artist but um uh, wow so so awesome 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 and certainly um i know you've gotten rave reviews what have people been saying that have been experiencing the project um the 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 comment that i've received probably more than anything else is i listen to this music and it helped me understand my life. It helped me understand my worship. I, I mean, I get that all the time. Um, and then I, I hear all the time, this is the most dangerous music to listen to while driving your car. Um, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> things like that. Um, you know, th- th- comical things. But in, in truth, you know, what I've gotten most is um, I, I'm so glad somebody is saying it like this. Um, yeah. Because it's really you, one of my um, preaching friends said this is 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 really um, you're really detailing the book. It, it really is a preachment, as it were, um, but it's just in song form. And um, I, that really was the point. I don't think we wanted to be necessarily preachy with the music, right. but what we were trying to do was convey that there are ways that we need to understand who God is, and there are ways. Um, that we need to embody his truth. The, the title song, the title title of the song really deals with embodying or being the living epistle of who Jesus is. We are what, what we are the Jesus, I'm going to say it right, that people see in the earth. Um, we don't see him in his physical form. We have the Holy Ghost, which is spiritual and invisible. But when people experience us, they experience the truth of who Jesus is. So it's our responsibility to reveal him every chance we get. And and honestly, I think that's what people are, are starting to understand. Like, okay, I understand. My job, my responsibility is to be a better light in the earth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just jumped over to Amazon. One reviewer said, uh, this is kingdom music that takes you to an experience. This is kingdom wow. music that takes you to an experience. A big shout out to that that reviewer. Uh, as you were, were explaining that, I was thinking of a, a mother who's trying to get their child to eat vegetables, or or you know they'll put spinach in, in the spaghetti, and they don't really, but they're getting it. Uh, they might not know exactly how they're getting it, but they're getting it all mixed in. So that's kind of the preaching coming through the music, and they don't even know that they're actually receiving preaching, but. Oh, wow. Absolutely, Wonderful. and that's really what the intent was. You know, we wanted yeah. it to be um, digestible, but not overt. If you don't understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying, because yes. sometimes if you try to force feed the Bible to people, they'll reject it. But if you give it to them in a methodology that they really don't, you know, that that makes them consider things a little bit differently, they'll receive it and not even know that they're receiving it. Music is is that kind of conduit. You know, you mm-hmm. can sleep and 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 be educated by music. You know, so people are, are are receiving the the gospel of Jesus, but they're receiving it in a way they don't they don't even realize that it's the gospel being preached. Wow, wow, wonderful, wonderful! So, listeners, pick up Jesus Revealed, support, get it, get it, get it. Uh, it's available on all of your all of the places that you can download music and all that good stuff. Um, make sure you pick that up and support, support, support. Uh, so, Bishop uh, Nelson, how do you balance ministry, family? Because we can certainly see in your social media family is important. Being a bishop, being a successful artist, how do you figure out how to balance all of that? Um, number one, extremely carefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Extremely carefully. Um, I, what I've discovered is that um, I can't say yes to everything. You know, I've learned mm-hmm. to really prioritize um, in a major way. Because family, if, if your family, God doesn't give us ministry in church to destroy our family. And if ministry is destroying your family, you really need to consider the what God calls you to do. Because obviously the blessing mm. of the Lord makes it rich and he adds no sorrow to it. And if your quote-unquote ministry, which should be a blessing to you, is destroying parts of who you are that are vital to your existence, then something is really wrong. And, you know, so because family is the first ministry God ever gave, you know, in Genesis chapter number 1, verses 27 and 28, um, be fruitful and multiply is, a, is, is an assignment for family. So family is, it is at the apex of my existence. Other than my relationship with God, family comes right after that. 
and then ministry filters in after that. So ministry at the church and then ministry on the road, whether it be preaching or singing, um, that's how I, I live my life. I prioritize things from that perspective. Oh, such good sound advice. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to the all of us that are in ministry and all those that are, are striving to be in ministry. Good, solid advice there from Bishop Jason Nelson. And listen, we didn't even charge you guys for it. Uh, we just want you to support <laughs> and pick up the project, and we want to see you, those that are in the cap- capital city of Richmond, Virginia, uh, come out and experience it. You, you hear the preaching coming out. Come out and experience the preaching ministry of Bishop Jason Jason Nelson, Sunday, April 26th, 5 p.m. This is for the 11th pastoral anniversary celebration of Bishop Joel Vincent Brown, who is my pastor, yes, who is my pastor, and that service is going to be held at Ephesus, Seventh Day at Venice Church, right on um, in Lothian Turnpike. You all know where it is. All right, so Bishop Nelson, the last question I have for you, the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know what continues to motivate you. Wow. Yeah. Motivate, <laughs> excite, and influence. Yeah. That's it's kind of a loaded question. What motivates me honestly is my relationship with God. Um life presents tons of challenges. Um that that if you're not careful you can kind of um misgauge how life is supposed to happen. But, you know, my relationship with God is, is at the point now where it literally controls what I do and what I don't do. Um, even even to the point where you know sometimes you're tempted to do certain things like for instance mm-hmm. you know overeat because you know a lot of us have a tendency to overeat. Um, oh no, stepping on toes, stepping on toes. Yes, yes, well, yes. Well, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just no, no, saying. no. That's a good example. That's a good example. Oh, we can uh, all but, relate. You know, but we have a tendency to to really overeat and to really yeah. deal with things from from the perspective of, um, you know. You eat until you're full versus you eat until you're satisfied. Mm. If you understand where I'm coming from, so yes. But yes. what happens is, but when you're eating until you're full, that ultimately becomes gluttony to a large extent. Not always, because sometimes mm-hmm. the food is just good, and you're not, you don't. You, sometimes you don't recognize it, but sometimes we just gorge ourselves just because it's there. Mm-hmm. In the same token, you know, when, when you're dealing with with spiritual things, there are times when I, I filter what I do in an earthly plane through my relationship with God and say, okay, is this pleasing to him? Is this, does this make him happy? And that literally guards me from certain things. There are certain traps I don't fall in. And not that I'm mm. perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But there are certain traps that I don't fall into because there are a lot of my decisions I make, I filter through my relationship with God, and that's what kind of gives me the drive, you know, maintaining that that relationship with God, reading my word, you know, consecrating, fasting, you know, staying in in a place of sanctification that that allows me to be open to hear what it is that he's saying. So um, I, I, I think my relationship is probably that driving force in my life. Yes. Well, I don't know that was a really we all need... way of, of answering the question, but... <laughs> No, this is listen. I love it. I love it. I love it because then I don't. I'm not pulling teeth. <laughs> I love interviewing preachers. I say it all the time. I never have any struggle with interviews with preachers. Uh, so I love. We love all the explanation and and just giving us additional wisdom and a different way to think of things and having that filter. Listeners, I know you all are connecting with that to have um, that put that filter uh, in our own lives and, and let it work for you. All right, Bishop Nelson, uh, you want to tell people how they can. Connect connect with you online, and then we'll we'll let you go. Absolutely. If you want to uh, connect with me online via Facebook, um, Twitter, or uh, Instagram, there I, you can follow me all at or slash Pastor J. Nelson. Pastor, just the letter J. Nelson. All right, there you have it. And I have tweeted, tagged on Facebook and Instagram, so those are easy connection points. Thank you so much again for stopping by the show. No problem at all. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right, listeners, we're going to be right back. Don't you go anywhere. It's the Charvet Mitchell Radio Show. Charvet will be back after this. Hello. We are 123jobzone.com, an online job search portal. We are user-friendly, and if you're searching for a job, with us, it's easy as 123. Step one. 
Go to www.123jobzone.com and register as a job seeker. Step 2. Once registered, upload your resumes. Step 3. Get connected with employers looking for people like you who are ready and willing to work. Don't forget to follow 123 Job Zone on Twitter and Facebook to find out more about our upcoming job fairs. What are you waiting for? Stop by 123jobzone.com today. Good luck with your job search. Spiritual Food for Thought. 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day by LaTanya Boyd consists of inspirational messages that offer daily words of empowerment, promote spiritual growth, and development in the Lord Jesus Christ for your day-to-day living. Spiritual Food for Thought. 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day. Available now on Kindle, ebook, and paperback. Log on to www.latiboyd.com. Are you starting a new business, releasing a CD, writing a new book? Consider Mitchell Productions for your web design services. Visit www.mitchell-productions.com for portfolio samples, specials, and package prices. Remember, a website is not a luxury item. It's a necessity. Check out Mitchell-Productions.com or find them at Facebook.com slash Mitchell Productions. She's here to motivate, excite, and influence you. She's Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Mitchell. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show with in-depth interviews from today's leading author, gospel artists, stars that you want to know about. And now, Charvette Mitchell. All right, welcome back again to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Super excited to be bringing the special edition for you guys. Uh, kicking off uh, the top of the hour, we just finished chatting it up with Bishop Jason Nelson. Uh, and I'm telling you what, we're moving right on in. Uh, my next guest is hanging out in the virtual green room, uh, so I know she has enjoyed some virtual snacks while in there, and I am chatting uh, with her, going to bring her up to the mic, Andrea Dumas. Uh, I just talked about her music ministry. I'm telling you what. Brand new project out, uh, Celebrate, and you can see her with Richard Smallwood and Vision, and just a dynamic young lady, and, and, and she's going to be in the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, as well uh, for Bishop Joel Vincent Brown's 11th pastoral anniversary celebration uh, that Sunday morning, Sunday, April 26th at 11 a.m., the guest psalmist for that service. So listen, without further ado, I am bringing Andrea Dumas up. To the mic. Hello. Hey, Charvette. How are you? Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, we're <laughs> waving virtually. Doing great. How are you doing? I am doing great. It's uh, just an awesome day, and I'm just really glad to be on your show. Thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, you are welcome. You are welcome. So let's let's jump right on in. Uh, certainly, you have had music ministry embedded uh, in your life. You've been a featured soloist. You've uh, performed background vocals. Uh, you shared the stage with many uh, gospel artists, as I mentioned. Uh, oh my goodness, Yolanda Adams, Richard Smallwood, uh, Donnie McClurkin, uh, and just have traveled. You've been at the White House. You've been out several countries. Let me just take a break and breathe. <laughs> do you feel like you need to breathe sometimes? Yes, I do. I actually do. And uh, But you know what? I love what I do, and I'm really committed to, you know, what God has given me in the music ministry. And so sometimes I have to pull myself back, but it's really hard because, like I said, I really enjoy it and I love what I do. Wonderful. So how far back do you remember having the gift uh, to sing? Well, um, you know, my family, we sang, you know, in church. We would, uh, my mother, she played the piano, um, played the piano for a choir, and uh, so we kind of grew up with music in the home. And so we would mostly just sing around in the house. We didn't, you know, we would join children's choirs and things like that. Um, Uh But I think the first time that I really knew, like, this is something that I enjoyed, I was probably in, like, middle school. And uh, I ended up, yeah, I ended up doing uh, a, a song at, at school, and, uh, and so I enjoyed it and I liked it. But it was really probably once I got to college that I knew that this is something that I really, you know, would like to do. 
And so um, when did you first have your kind of, I'm going to say, big break as far as singing um, either featured soloist or background vocalist with, with no, someone notable? Well, actually, the first uh, the first artist, and that not a lot of people know about this, but the first uh, artist, well, she's an artist now, but at that time she was up and coming, I sang background for Morette Brown Clark. Um, yeah. That was the first person that I, uh, you know, sang background for. Um, and then I guess as far as, um, you know, singing with someone that was a, at that time, you know, accomplished and, and had recorded, I would have to say Yolanda Adams was actually the first person that I sang for, you know, professionally traveling extensively with her as a background singer. And how many countries have you been to? I remember seeing that somewhere, you, the, the actual number of countries you've done, you travel to singing. Yeah, I, I've probably been to, I probably have to up that one um, by one because I did go to Guadalupe last year. So about 16 countries I've been to. Um, and uh, it's just awesome to be able to, you know, travel, doing music ministry and just being able to come in contact with so many different cultures um, yeah. and the way in which they praise and worship God. Um, and just, you know, carrying the gospel, you know, throughout the world. I mean, everyone doesn't get the opportunity to do that. And even as a background vocalist, I really, you know, took that seriously, uh, you know, being a part, um, you know, of her ministry um, as a background singer. And just, like I said, spreading the gospel all around. That's what we do this for. Um, yeah. And so it was just awesome. I have so many memories, things that I'll never, ever forget. And it was all because of, you know, that opportunity that I had, you know, as a singer. Absolutely. And do you find uh, in all of your travels that we are a lot more alike than we are different? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. We are a lot more alike and um, very expressive. And it's not just, um, you know, those that, you know, are of African descent, but mm -hmm. just, you know, just as far as praising and worshiping God, I mean, that that's universal, is universal. Every people do it differently, but it but it is universal. All right. So you could have taken the comfortable route. Uh, you could have just said, "Well, I'll just continue being a background vocalist, uh, and I'll just continue kind of supporting other people's ministry." Uh, but you decided to step out yourself and do your own project, celebrate. And I'm excited because I was at the live recording for that. <laughs> Woohoo! Big shout out to Calvary yeah. Nation. Um, so, what was the catalyst that that pushed you to say, "Let me do my own uh, project"? Well, um, I I did feel like there was an unctioning of the Lord for me to. Uh, you know, record a project um, and to be able to minister. I, over the years, I've always continued, even as a background vocalist and a member of Vision, I would always, you know, have engagements and, um, you know, singing for conferences and women's conferences and convocations and, and all of that. And so I, you know, have always done that. And I, I just felt like it was time for me to be able to ex express what God had given me um, and to be able to minister, uh, you know, the message and, and just kind of like what God has given me to share with the with the world. Um, God, he put some great people around me to be able to assist me in that because, again, like you said, I was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, I will, you know, I'm, a, I'm still a member of Vision, which I will always be a member of Vision, and it's like my family. I love I love each and every one of them, and of course Richard. And um, but it's just being able to kind of express what God has given me, and to kind of you know put that out there. And so I'm just really grateful, you know, for the opportunities that I've had, you know, thus far uh, since uh, releasing the project. And um, I'm just really excited. It's not just about industry. It's not mm -hmm. just about being a known artist, but it's really about ministry and being able to minister to people and uh, using music um, to do that. All right. Well said. So how did you come up with the title Celebrate? Well, uh, Celebrate um, is, uh, it was that song when I think about what God has done for me and has done in my life, um, I like I have a reason to celebrate. It's like it's because of God that I am who I am. The scripture that is one of my favorite scriptures 
Um, Psalm 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And I, I just, I am a praiser, I'm a worshiper, I love God. And so Stephen McCoy wrote Celebrate, He and um, as we were kind of going through the process and all of the songs coming together, it's just like I, I knew that that should be the title of the um of the cd and um it just encompasses everything that god has done for me in my life and i just want to be able to express that and so um so when people see my name and then they see celebrate then they understand what that's about all right i love it i love it while they're listening tell our uh, listeners how they can pick up a copy well, of course, uh, the Project Celebrate, it is available in all your digital outlets, uh, iTunes, Amazon, etc. I recently signed um, a distribution deal with New Day Christian, so it should be available in uh, uh, stores. So for those um, retailers out there, you know, contact New Day so to get that into your stores. And then also it's available online um, at my website, andreadumas.com. And then also at CD Baby as well. And Amazon. Right. And also, they can get physical copies also from Amazon.com as well. All right. There you go. There you go. Okay, so tell us uh, some of the other songs that are on Celebrate that uh, listeners, will, listeners will be able to experience. Uh, Jesus is um, was written by Darius Polk. Uh, a known uh, songwriter, oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. is an awesome song. So that's my uh, lead single from the um, from the CD. Uh, you just hold on. Is uh, I did that with the uh, choir from my church, the Celebration Choir. It's like a up tempo, good old churchy, Pentecostal style song, if you will. Um, and that's something that I do, you know, quite a bit. Uh, it's just so many uh, hero. Mm-hmm. It's a, be- a beautiful song uh, that was again written by Stephen McCoy. Uh, there's just so many, so many different songs. He- uh, Heal the land, give him praise. I mean, I can go on and on and on. It's, um, there's a, uh, yeah, there's 11 uh, tracks on the CD, um, and so it's just a, mu- uh, a bunch of music that kind of encompasses the whole genre of gospel music. So it's not just um just one style my desire was to be able to reach uh anyone in any style um any denomination uh if there's something for everyone on the project and so um right. song, like something I said, yeah for great yeah something for everyone Something for everyone. Wonderful. And uh, certainly you have served faithfully. We talked about kind of the glamorous, you know, flying all around the different countries and background singing and all that, but you serve locally. Uh, and so how important is it for artists to ensure that they, number one, are up under leadership, uh, good leadership, and that they also serve where they are? How important is that? Uh, I believe that is very important, something that I've always uh, believed in is that you should serve where you're being fed, and uh, mm-hmm. I am a member of Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church in Washington D.C., and um, and I do serve there uh, faithfully in the music department, and I'm also working with our teen church Impact as well, um, develop, uh, working with the pastor there with the music ministry down there, and so um, I just believe that you should you know you should give back. Um, you know, where you are, and I definitely think that it also helps to keep you grounded and stay focused uh, spiritually in your relationship with God, and then your understanding of the purpose of ministry and what it's uh, what it's for. We are servants, and we've yeah. been called to serve, and so even as a music minister, go- a psalmist, gospel artist, we are still servants of the Lord, and, uh, and we should keep that in the forefront of what we do, even in the midst of the business that we should still remember uh what you know who we are who we are what we've been called to do and who we are to serve uh which is the people of God in the world well said well said well said uh so there your there's your free tip right there uh your free tip those that are in music ministry and aspiring to be uh to keep grounded i saw uh on instagram the other day someone posted 
um, they had a, a picture, a graphic that said, well done, thy good and faithful. And then it had a list of titles, a lot of different mm-hmm. titles, and they were all marked through. And at the very bottom it said servant. So just right. kind of a reminder, you know, that's what's going to count in the end is to be That's what's going to count. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and so how would you describe your sound? If if there's someone listening and they haven't experienced you yet, how would you describe your sound? Oh, that's, that's really a hard question. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I would say, oh gosh, uh, I wouldn't say traditional, um, and I wouldn't say urban contemporary. So I'm somewhere in between. I would say that I'm somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. There you go. We won't. We won't <laughs> box you in. We won't make you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Don't box me in. Don't box. <laughs> don't. Me in. Don't box you in. Listeners, if you just tuned in, hey, you're checking out the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Uh, heard all across the world wide web. We're broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, and we're chatting up here in our artist spotlight. Andrea Dumas uh, is joining us here. And listen, you can experience her music ministry at the 11th past anniversary celebration for Bishop Joel Vincent Brown on Sunday, April 26th. Sunday, April 26th at 11 a.m., uh, 701 Johnston Willis Drive. Go to NJICM.com. Uh, and if you can't remember any of that, if you're on Charvette.com, that's all you need to know. Charvette.com has the flyer, uh, has the website link, and all that good stuff. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about where you want to go next. Do you see yourself putting out additional projects? Do you see yourself going in a different uh, area with ministry? I know you also do some things with um, a record label as well so we could chat about. Yes, well, you know, I'm I'm really focused on what I'm doing now. Um, you know, <laughs> as far as the project, it, it has been a tremendous undertaking, um, but the Lord has blessed, and, and so I'm really focused on um, you know, traveling, ministering, um, songs from the project, and just, you know, w- working with churches however the Lord sees fit. I served on a panel last week, um, or week before last, I can't remember now, um, kind of discussing gospel music and, and ministry. And so I, I see that that may be something that I may be moving into more so. I'm doing, a, you know, speaking in addition to um, the music ministry. So, um, and then, of course, you know, I do, you know, I have the uh, the label um, in which, you know, that I, um, you know, oversee. And so, uh, so working with that as well. So I, I'm quite busy, but, um, <laughs> you know, the Lord gives me the strength to do everything that I'm doing. And, um, and so I'm just kind of really excited. I don't know what may, you know, I do probably, you know, see myself doing additional projects down the road, but really my focus is just kind of where I am now and then just kind of seeing where the Lord takes me and, um, and just, you know, doing that. All right, open to his direction, open Mm -hmm. to his direction. All right, my last question for you, the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know what continues to motivate you. Uh, I think what motivates me is serving God's people. I mean, Mm -hmm. I really do love doing it, and not just when I'm standing in front of people on a stage with a mic in my hand, I mean, I definitely um, enjoy serving the people of God um, in any capacity. I do, you know, quite a bit of, you know, different things in my church in addition to serving in music ministry. Even in a, from a support role, I have an yeah. administrative position um, with a, a system, minister of music as his administrator. And so it's not even just me being out front, but just the behind the scenes, I enjoy doing that as well. Um I I think just the call of God and and just knowing that I've been called to do what I'm doing and I just continue to stay focused on that and just kind of push forward and I just put my hand to the plow and I don't look back, you know, I just just keep moving forward in that. And so I just focus on the call of God, serving God's people and, you know, just living a purposeful life. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I stay focused on. 
All right. I think I hear a clear theme, focus from you. That's good. That's good. We can all we can all take that as a, a wisdom nugget to to focus on our priorities. Well, it's been great featuring you on the show yes. and just chatting with you one more time. Tell listeners how they can pick up your project. Again, my project is available on AndreaDumas.com and all the digital outlets. Uh, and if you want to get more information about the project or uh, anything related to dates and things that I'm doing, um, you can. I'm on all social media uh, as Andrea Dumas Music and uh, and Andrea Dumas DC. All right, there you have it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me, Charvette. I look forward to coming to Richmond on April 26th. Yes, ma'am. We're looking forward to having you. Okay. All right. Wonderful. All right. All right, listeners, listen, we're going to keep moving. We're going to keep right on moving into our next segment. Uh, I'm delighted. Our next guest is hanging out in the virtual green room, so I know she is enjoying some virtual snacks in there. I'm talking about Chief Apostle Olive C. Brown, certainly a powerful prophetic voice, a pastor's pastor, a trailblazer, presiding prelate of International Christian Ministries, published author, uh, latest book, Unlocking the Giant Within, is available on Amazon.com, and we're excited to feature her on the Charvette Mitchell radio show, backed by popular demand, so we're going to the mic right now to bring Chief Apostle on air. Hello, welcome to the show. How are you, Charvette Elder? How are you doing? I am doing wonderful. We're glad to have you back. Oh, thank you. I've been hanging out in the virtual green room, sucking on halls and orange <laughs> juice and water. Thank you Praise for supplying God. me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <sighs> Oh, wow. Let's jump in. Uh, So since the last time you were here, uh, your book was an upcoming release. It hadn't come out yet, but now it's been out a few months. It's uh, recently available on Amazon.com, Unlocking the Giant Within. Uh, Tell us what have readers been saying about this book? Oh, readers readers are just so... I am so amazed. Let me say this. I am so amazed. I'm not going to prolong the the question, but I am so amazed at our God that God could set me up at a time in my life that most people have retired 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. They have retired 15 years ago, and I am jumping in, going full steam ahead, like like whatever going west, I, I am uh-huh. just so amazed at God that he could use me. I really believe not that I'm a phenomenon just because I'm who I am, and praise right. God for that, but I am speaking to millions, millions who yeah. have would really set aside in, in the rocking chair, sipping on Kool-Aid on the porch. And here I have produced a book and books. Yes, <laughs> five books. And Absolutely. the giant is now on um, Amazon. Unlocking the giant within is on Amazon, which I didn't even have a clue what I was doing, what I was <laughs> going to do. Uh-huh. I just heard God say books, you know. And I yeah. got to give credit to my 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 suffragan bishop, Bishop Gail Williams. You know, she would come down on the weekends with her children and all of my children, and I was just writing away. I mean, this is 20 years ago plus. Oh and she would say, you got books over there, books, but I'm just handwriting and then on the computer. And she sparked that in me. You've got books in you. And, and now today, this is where I am. I am with wow. the books and enjoying. And we see it. Amen. And we Amen. see it, and we see it, and certainly uh, anyone following you on Facebook, your social media, I mean, you are always giving um, wisdom and giving downloads to help us unlock uh, the giant within. And so what recommendations do you have for, let's say, leaders or pastors that are listening and they want to unlock their giant? What recommendations do you have for them? You know, when I hear you say leaders or pastors, 
that's really strange that you would say, how can they unlock the giant? But I know just Mm -hmm. what you're saying, because Mm -hmm. even though many are out there, as um, Andre Dumas has said, they're put their hand to the plow and they're not looking back, but yet they're stuck in a rut. They're Mm. stuck in many of our leading great congregations and leading great ministries and are doing women's ministry or men's ministry or whatever it is, but yet doing everything they have seen in the past. Therefore, the giants are still within them because I'm telling you, God would not call a person if he needed a duplicate. He calls us and gives us to this world because he needs us to be who we are. So we have to unlock the giant by not being a replica of something that we've seen, even though that's not bad, even though, you know, we do some of that. But Jesus said, don't be a replica. Greater things shall you do because I'm going to the Father. I'm going to do more through you than you're going to do more through others than I've done. So he's just saying, sit on the porch and sit on the back and just, you know, do the same old, same old. That's what I want pastors and bishops and leaders and mothers and fathers to see there are giants within you that have not been discovered. You know, I am just bubbling over with that. Let let me tell you. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Look, you're I, fine. I told Bishop I, Nelson said this. Bishop Nelson said, "Listen, I just give long answers." I said, "Listen, it's no, it's no problem. Take your time." <laughs> I'm giving a long answer. I I went on Google. I, you know, I talk to Google all the time. Google talks to me. Google yeah. said, um, "I asked Google. I said, when was the first radio invented?" And it says by. Um, um, Marconi or Marconi invented it in 1899. But let me tell you, somebody within this man had to realize that was something different that needed to be discovered in the earth. It was downloaded yeah. to him. So this is why I'm saying to leaders and pastors and whatever, there's something that hadn't been done. There's a giant within you that has not been discovered by anybody, anybody in the world. Steve Jobs, all those people, they are discovering things that nobody else has done. And the earth is still in a holding pattern waiting for your giant, whatever it is. My God, waiting for your giant, whatever it is. Listeners, if you just tune in, we see you coming on the phone lines. Hey there, uh, you're listening to Chief Apostle Olive C. Brown, uh, Dr. Olive C. Brown, uh, author of Unlocking the Giant Within, Unlocking the Giant Within. You can pick that up on Amazon.com. Yes, yes, yes. And Chief Apostle, I know you've been traveling a lot and ministering all over. Uh, Are there any common messages or common themes that God has been down loading to you to share with the people of God? Yeah, I'm, I I am um, John, uh, St. John, 10 and 10. You know, the thief cometh to kill, to yeah. steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. I I feel there's uh, uprising in a good way, in a positive way, of people who are seeking for life the abundant life. They're tired of where they've been. They're tired of just doing whatever they've been doing. But they're asking God because they see friends. They see, as Bishop Joel told us on Sunday, they see, excuse me, whoever, the wicked (laughs) prospering Mm -hmm. like green bay trees. And they're like, God, what about me? What about me? So there are so many things that we need We just need God. We need God to just let us know that uh, there's abundant life out there. And then Ephesians 3 and 20, you know, you can more than you can. He wants to give you more than you could ask or think. There's so much out there that God wants to give us. So those kind of themes, and, of course, everybody wants debt freedom, you know, and and that's good. You know, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. 
We have to learn how to get it. So all of those things, when you come into a congregation and they're pulling on the prophetic all the time, you know, if you have a stream of a prophetic in you, people are pr- pulling on the prophetic. They want life. Yeah. They want abundant life. You know, they want more than you can ask or think. They want God to do great things. And I, I thank him, you know, just today, you know, my administrator, you know, I think I have like four engagements that just came in today. They are just coming oh my. since January. Yeah. Even in the cold, I was going. It was. I mean, it's been, as I say, I just cannot even do anything but be amazed at God. And I almost laugh and say, God, you have a sense of humor. Five children, <laughs> like 19 grandchildren, and here I am doing what the 40- and the 50-year-old people are doing, you know, running up and down the coast. Oh, God yeah. is so amazing. But it just wow. lets you know anybody, God can use any vessel, as the s- sister said before, just stay focused. Just stay, stay, stay focused. Stay focused. And listeners, you can also hear Chief Apostle Olive C. Brown uh, preaching ministry uh, during the 11th pastoral anniversary celebration of Bishop Joel Vincent Brown on that Sunday, Sunday, uh, April 26th at 11 a.m. Chief Apostle Olive C. Brown is the speaker for that service right at New Jerusalem uh, International Christian Ministry, 701 Johnston Willis Drive. Uh, Come and be blessed. Pick up the book, pick up the book, Unlocking the the giant within and listen chief apostle we've tagged you on facebook and all that good stuff so listeners that's an easy connection point you want to follow chief apostle on uh, on social media to stay up to date with what's going on well i know this was just a quick little quick uh interview but i'm glad we had a chance to chat with you i'm glad to be with you i'm so proud of you i'm godly proud that you are with us we are with you and we stand together you have stood strong and still standing with uh, accountability. Thank you. God is going to do even greater things for you, Charvette. And I thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing me to come on. My honor, my high honor. Thank you, Chief Apostle. Thank you. All Amen. right, listeners, uh, we're moving right on in. I, t- I told you to put your seatbelts on uh, for this show because we just wanted to give you all the good nuggets. Listen, we have uh, coming up now uh, next Bishop Sean Lewis. He's been hanging out in the virtual uh, virtual green room. Uh, I'm telling you what, representing Petersburg, Virginia, uh, senior pastor of Rama Word Ministries, and I'm bringing him up to the Mike, right now, uh, Bishop Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, woman of God. Thank you for the invitation to be a part of the show. Oh, it is my honor, my honor. Uh, let's jump right on in. I want the listeners to to find out a little bit about you. So, how did ministry start for you? Well, ministry started for me when I was serving in the United States Navy in Pensacola, Florida. I had just gotten married in 1995 to my wife of now 20 years, Shelly, and um, once we moved down to Pensacola, about probably about six or seven months later, I started going through some changes in my life, not because of the, um, the marriage, but I had lost mm-hmm. like three close friends of mine that particular year um, in 1997, and um, I was going through unaware grief, which is the worst kind of grief to go through. And all of a sudden, my life and my health started to take a drastic toll. I started having chest pain, started having headaches, and a lot of other issues. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. And from what I was experiencing at the time, the enemy told me that I was going to die and I wouldn't live to see 35 years old. I was 27 years old at the time, and I'm 44 right now, so God is good. But in that yeah. same year, as I was going from church to church and going from doctor to doctor, trying to find a, a remedy for what I was going through, because basically if you can uh, get a doctor to diagnose what you're going through, you know what to pray for. But I was yeah. going to doctor to doctor, and they couldn't tell me anything as to what was going on in my life. So I started from going from church to church, um, hadn't really been planted in a good Bible-based church um, down there, uh, just going from church to church, doing my own thing. Um, and trying to seek God or call myself seeking God for my healing. And then one day I walked into a small storefront church by the name of Fellowship Prayer Temple, and Chavette, I tell you, they read me my rights. I had wow. never experienced five full ministry before in my life. I had never been prophesied to in my life, but I am telling you on that day, they began to prophesy over me 
They began to tell me things about myself that I had been going through. I was 13 hours away from anybody who should know anything about me, and these people read me my rights. And they began to let me know on that day that, number one, that God had a plan for my life, and number two, they confirmed that there was a calling on my life. I had been having dreams and visions of me running and not getting anywhere, and I didn't understand it until on that particular day when they began to speak over my life and they let me know that God had a calling on my life. So I began to realize at that moment that once they spoke life over me, that I could not die, but I had to live and declare the work of the Lord. It seems like the word that the enemy had given me about me dying was uprooted the very moment that they began to prophesy and began to speak over my life. And from that day on, it changed my entire life. My whole way of thinking has changed, and as a result of one prophetic word spoken over my life, I am here today serving God's people. My God, from one word. One prophetic word. word. And it's simply amazing because that was in 1997, and, um, you know, as I sat in the service, I'm telling you, it was so funny because – that particular day I was asking God to order my steps where to go, and I sat through the service, and I'm telling you, I said, Lord, today I could have had a V8. This is one of the days yeah. I could have had a V8 instead of going to church. Yeah. And But I'm telling you, when the altar call was made, you know, a man of God got up, and he began to say, somebody in here is going through depression. And um, I knew that he was speaking to me, so I went up to the altar, and they began to pray, and they began to prophesy. The pastor wasn't even in the church that day. Um, but there was an elder there who was facilitating the service, and there were prophetess there and prophets there. And one prophetess followed me all the way back to my seat, and she began to tell me everything about me. She told me how I had been going to doctors, told me how I'd been having headaches, told me how I couldn't sleep, told me how I couldn't eat. And then she really messed me up when she said, and you got a praying mama that gave you back to God years ago. And so I knew I was in the right place yeah. at the right time, and I received um, a right now rhema word from the Lord. And from that moment on, the rest was his story. Not my story, but it was his, his story. And uh, we ended up joining that ministry, and I accepted my call into the ministry in 1998. So, um, you know, we've been uh, maintaining and sustaining since then 17 years in ministry as of today. Longevity, wonderful, not wishy-washy, but some stability in ministry. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Tell us about uh, Rhema Word Ministries. Well, Rhema Word Ministries is a non-denominational church with a Pentecostal affiliation whose sole purpose in life seeks to impact the world through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, while at the same time we're developing believers into a Christ-like maturity. Um, The amazing thing about the ministry is, I'm doing what was done to me uh, some 20 years ago because on that day that I got prophesied to in the church, I literally sat there. I, I felt a huge burden lift up off of me, and I said, my God, I would love to be able to speak into the lives of people and to give them a right now word that would change people's life. Just like this woman, you know, when she prophesied over me, it, it changed my life. And little did I know way back then, God heard my my request, and he has now released me to be able to do the exact same thing, to be able to speak into the lives of people. We've had so many people to come to this church, uh, battered and bruised. We have people coming in from uh, broken homes and broken relationships, and they are literally being changed uh, by the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. Real ministry being fulfilled, and you see the fruit and you see the the reward from that. Uh, Listeners, this is Bishop Sean Lewis, uh, and you can hear his preaching ministry during the 11th pastoral anniversary celebration of Bishop Joel Vincent Brown on that Friday. He's going to kick things off that Friday, April 24th at 7.30 p.m. at New Jerusalem International Christian Ministries, right down on 701 Johnston Willis Drive, uh, opening speaker, uh, Bishop Sean Lewis, so you will be able to experience that. All right, so Petersburg, you're in the Petersburg area. I'm telling you what, so much is going on in Petersburg, just revitalization. Um, Do you hope certainly that continues? What other improvements do you want to see in the community? Uh, Most definitely. We'd love to see more revitalization 
um, 44 years old, and I grew up in a town called Waverly, Virginia, which is around about 20-some minutes from Petersburg. And mm-hmm. we used to come to Petersburg all the time. There was a mall there. There were a lot of shopping stores there. And after a while, it seems like everything went up to the Chesterfield area, Colonial Heights, and um, we're grateful for that. But we need some more um, stores down here. We need revitalization down here. But as far as things being uh, done to improve the community, community I would love to be able to see a convergence or a come together of church leadership and uh, local leaderships come together and have open forums to discuss issues in the city and what we can do to make our city uh, a safer place and a better place to live. Um, we are a young church around about six years old this year, um, mm-hmm. and uh, we do things occasionally as far as outreach to impact the community because um, that's a part of our mission statement to impact the world. But you can't impact the world without impacting your own community first. So occasionally we'll have outreach such as back um, of encouragement. We'll have um, times where we'll um, sow into families at Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, Earlier in January, we were able to bless and partner with one local school and give them like 75 coats for kids whose parents couldn't afford them. Um, But it's only so much that we as a young church, I won't say a small church, a young church can do. So I would love to see um, a convergence or a coming together of leadership um, in the city and see what we can do more to impact the school system as well as um, the economical state of the uh, the area. All right, so Petersburg, uh, look to see more, look to see more, and we look to see more coming from that area, more good things uh, that can continue to come from that area. So, uh, Bishop Lewis, tell us your service times and all of that for Rhema Word Ministries. Yes, we have a Sunday morning uh, worship service starts at 11, but we have intercessory prayer from 9 o'clock a.m. to 9.30 uh, a.m. We have Sunday school from 9.45 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday night, we have midweek manna at 7 o'clock, and normally lasts around about 8.30. All right, there you go. There you have it. So what advice would you give to uh, any new pastors or those that are new in ministry? Anything you learned along the way that you could share? Well, how much time do I have for that question? (laughs) A few minutes, a few minutes. (laughs) I'm just joking. Oh, man, so many things, so many nuggets that I have learned um, from uh, my pastor in Florida and just from uh, my bishop, Bishop Tyrone Harper, as well. But um, just, I guess, three words of my advice for new pastors. Um, number one, um, keep your ears close to the mouth of God and stay focused on what he says. Um, I heard a long time ago that he who speaks to the people for God must speak to God for the people. So a lot of times when God gives you a vision for your ministry or when you're engaged in doing a good work for the Lord, you can always expect that you will encounter some unusual storms, some contrary winds, and people on what I like to call the BTE committee. That's the Back to Egypt committee. Uh, (laughs) They would rather have things better uh, in Egypt. And they will come. um, We had coffins in Egypt. We had this in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. (laughs) They'd rather have the barley and onions rather than having the houses that they didn't build, the vineyards that they didn't plant, and, and just the freedom of being able to serve God. So, um, you know, you'll you'll have things to come to frustrate your God-given purpose. Uh, But so, therefore, you have to keep your your ear close to the mouth of God um, and and, and be like me about it. You have to know that you are engaged within a good work. Also, I recommend that they uh, connect with other pastors in the community. Um, One of the things I read in The Purpose Driven Life, it teaches you that no man is an island, so we all need each other to be able to survive. So um, I, I highly recommend connecting with other uh, pastors, you know, people who have been there, done that, spent the night, got a T-shirt and a strawberry. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A great and advice. Three number three, keep yes. your vision of the house ever before the people. Um, you know, sheep are directionless. They will constantly and always need guidance and direction. So write your vision down, make it plain as possible so they can read it and run with it. That's for pastors, but for those um, who are new to the ministry, my advice is to basically get connected and stay connected um, to a good Bible-based church and under some godly leadership, people not that would just love you when you're right but will correct you when you're wrong. Um, mm-hmm. I, I can't tell you the doors that have opened for me just by uh, being able to receive correction and rebuke. 
Um, and just from serving my leader well, there have been so many doors open for me. I just don't even have the time to tell you all the things that God has done uh, for me. So just serve well. Second thing is to study. Uh, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And one of the things that my pastor used to tell me all the time, she says, son, study like it depends on you, but have faith like it depends on God. Oh, and the last thing, yeah. the last thing I would say is um, I will just uh, piggyback off what Chief Apostle said. Um, I just joined the last part of the call, um, but I heard her say, be yourself. Most definitely be mm-hmm. yourself. Nobody wants a copy and copy. God definitely doesn't need a copy and copy. If he needed one, he would go to the copy machine. So just <laughs> be you. Be comfortable in your own skin. Oh, right. Wonderful, wonderful. There you go again. Uh, like Oprah's Life class, I'm telling you, you just got some wisdom nuggets right there from Bishop Sean Lewis. Again, who is opening up, uh, opening speaker for the 11th Pastoral Anniversary Celebration for Bishop Joel Vincent Brown on Friday, April 24th, uh, 7.30 p.m. at New Jerusalem uh, International Christian Ministries, right over at 701 Johnston Willis Drive. Well, it has been great chatting with you, and it was an honor to feature you on the show. Thank you so much again for the invitation, and we're super excited about sharing the word of God for Bishop Joel Brown, one of my covenant brothers, and yes. finally getting a chance to meet Chief Apostle Olive C. Brown. So I'll get a chance to meet the Browns that night. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. Yes, sir. We look forward to, to having you and, and experiencing your preaching ministry. So thank you so much. All right, listeners, that's a wrap for tonight's show. Oh, my goodness, check back with us. Listen, we you know, we have shows all the time, uh, and so we just keep things moving. We just keep things going. Uh, if you missed any portion of the show, just jump over to Charvette.com or send your friends over there and tell them, hey, you need to listen to this show. I'll see you later. Adios, amigos. Live from Richmond, Virginia, you have been listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Connect with her at Charvette.com. And until next week, stay motivated, excited, and influenced. The Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Signing off.